Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well. I'm Rob, I'm a violin and viola player and teacher here in town and today in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tension. So tension is always a big problem for a lot of us, especially in university when we're when this is the first time that we're in some de dealing with some very very high level like classical music for example. I can't tell you how many people that I know in the university, either piano players or violin, cello, viola, whatever, that dealt with some sort of tension issues, which can lead to things like carpal tunnel and tendonitis and stuff. And so it's it's really a big problem with violins. I mean, we're 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 turning right our hand, and especially when we get up to stuff like way in the high positions, this is a really really abnormal position for our hand to be in. So it's very important for you to to have your tension under control. It's it's a very weird thing with tension because we if if I'm totally relaxed, I mean my hands are like this, so that there's some amount of tension we're going to have to have, but you have to have some sort of balance where you're not too tight, right? But you're using your muscles too at the same time. So I'm not completely opposed to things like stretching. A lot of people talk about using stretching and yoga and that kind of stuff. I think there's definitely some usefulness in that. But I'm the type of person, instead of like playing tight and then stretch tight and then stretch, I'm just kind of a, kind of a person that why don't you just learn to play relaxed and then you don't even need to stretch, right? I don't do hardly, I, I mean, I don't do any stretches. I'll, you know, maybe work my back out in the morning or something before I work out, but with, with you know, practicing my stretching and all this stuff, I, I don't need to do any of that because I've learned how to play relaxed. It's very possible. I mean, we you, you'll look in, in any symphony and you'll see somebody there that's 70, 80, maybe even 90, and, you know, how the heck did they play like 81 years and not get any tendonitis? Well, not it's actually not that hard because they learned when they were like, 14 or something how to play relaxed and then you it's really really difficult to get tendonitis when you're playing very very relaxed so So a little a little bit about me and my ten my tension journey I had so I went through all this school and then I got to college and played a lot of stuff in college and what happened was after college, I started dealing with a lot of my rock music. I started diving out into rock and jazz and funk and stuff. And when I was playing in those bands, I was realizing that especially the rock, you're playing really hard and you're gripping and you're going for it and whatever. And so I was realizing I was starting to get a little bit tight. And then the same thing happened when I started to write my albums around the same time. So I was putting my instrument down like this and I was plucking a lot of, you know, guitar, you know, just figuring out guitar riffs, you know, I was just plucking stuff, right? And so I had my hand here instead of here. And so that, that also created a lot of problems for me. And so what happened was I went back to a teacher and realized that I had, a, you know, a couple of literally 30 year bad habits. And so I needed to break some of those. And so he gave me basically a year's worth of technique. And one of the things that was happening to me is when I would go to my shows, I would be doing like 15 minutes and I would get already, I would already be getting tight. And his, the stuff that he was telling me, I went from 15 minutes of being tight to like three hour gigs with no problem at all. It was like that drastic of a difference. And so he, he showed me kind of what I was doing wrong. And I, I see this a lot in my students. We talk about this a lot. And so here's a couple of things that he showed me. So the, the first thing that we were taught is we were taught, first of all, to turn our head, right? Find the instrument. We also were taught to sort of do this, right? I'm sure some people have, are, are remembering this. And part of this is to learn how to tune and stuff because we can't hold. Um, but with us dropping our hand off of there, what I am forced to do here is with my chin, I'm gripping down, shoulder up, and I'm gripping, right? Kind of hard. And the thing to remember with the gripping thing is that 
when you are doing things with your hands, your brain says, hey, grab that, idiot. You know, like, hey, use your hand to grab that. And then you, your, your brain sends a signal out to your hand and then you grab it, right? So it starts in here. Well, tension sort of works the same way, right? If your shoulder is really tight, it's going to be very difficult for my hand to be super relaxed. But if as soon as I relax my shoulders like that, it's going to be not as hard to have my hand be relaxed. And this whole idea of sending your, your looseness or relaxedness out to your hands works for all instruments. This happens all the time with drummers where they're, they're doing some like really fast swing on a ride cymbal. If, they, if they're doing this, there's no way they're keeping up, not even close. But as soon as they drop this, all of a sudden they can go fast. As an example of a uh, video game analogy sometimes on a video game you might have a little section where you have to like press a a whole bunch of times well even those kind of times to go as fast as you can it's hard to be all tight and like uh, right what you need to do is relax and then all of a sudden you can tap super fast so it's the same kind of problem of relaxing your shoulders this is going to work for clarinet saxophone drums guitar violin it's going to work for all of them Okay, so what I would suggest is just like we were saying is, well, first of all, what was happening is you need, you need to be straight on, right? What a lot of people do is they turn their head like this, and this is what happened in my lesson. So I was realizing that what I was doing was, or he showed me that I was turning my head, I was also turning my body, and I was dipping down. And he came over to me, and he literally took my instrument out, and then I stood here like an idiot, right? And I was just laughing. We were both laughing. We we're like, wow, this is how I really play. And so I realized that I needed to move this up, move my body back to middle, and then move my head. And I need to have my nose straight out. And so don't sit here with your instrument and basically be moving your body to find your instrument, right? This is kind of what a lot of people do. It's almost like it's on a stand or something and I'm coming to the stand. Don't do that. You're the boss, right? So you stand here and bring your instrument to you, right? And then you, it may be okay to just drop your chin down a little bit in the instrument, but basically bring your instrument to you and notice how my nose is straight at the camera, right? You want to keep just like you're singing in a choir. You don't do like all of this kind of stuff to sing, right? They have you straight on. Here's your music and your vocal cords and everything has got good pathways. It's the same thing with this, right? You want your body generally pointed outward, right? And like this. So you bring your instrument to you. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing is with this grippy kind of thing, I would actually suggest, and this seems opposite of what you would think, but I would actually try it just actually lifting up a little more from your hand. And then what that does is that allows you to relax your shoulders because you're actually holding here. You're not holding here as much. And so what this is going to do is when you're, when you're able to relax your shoulders, it's really interesting because that's going to send a little bit more relaxedness out to your hand. But what's funny is just like sort of the Eastern philosophy and yoga and stuff is they kind of know very well that all of this crap is connected, right? So your neck is sort of connected to your shoulder and it's connected to your upper back. It's all in the same area. Right? So if you relax your neck, that's going to probably relax your shoulder. And then this whole side is going to be really relaxed. But what's really funny is your neck is, re is, is uh, connected to this side, but your neck's also connected to this side. And so what I found what was so funny is when I started relaxing, my bow and my tone got a lot better because my right arm is relaxed too. Right? So you're hitting two birds with one stone a little bit. Right? So I would suggest for you guys to actually, if you're having tension problems, I would actually try to relax, try to hold up actually a little bit more with your hand. This is opposite of what we were taught, but I, I would try it. I dare you to try it. And what that, again, that allowed me to relax all of this. One thing that's interesting about bluegrass players is that you'll see some of them with the thing literally off of their chin. And though they're going fast as heck. 
Now, it seems like that they're getting a lot of tension, which I, I don't love that their wrist was up on the neck, but one thing that they're, allow, that they're allowing themselves to do is all of their shoulders are relaxed, right? So even if they're not down and they're playing like this, I think you might be surprised at how little attention they might actually be having because they're not, they're not gripping like crazy with their neck. So, you, so I would grip a little, or I would, I would hold up a little bit more from here, okay? And the other thing to think about is that when you're, when you're doing this, the, if, if your chin, if you're used to playing kind of on your chest a little bit like this, well, if I lift my chin off of here, that thing just falls. Right? So when you do this, you're probably going to have to kind of finagle your instrument. What you want to be able to do is you want to be able to lift that off of there and this instrument ain't going anywhere. Right? And because this is my shoulder rest, right? It's going on top of my shoulder. It's not a chest rest. It's a shoulder rest. So I want my, I want my thing on top of my shoulder. Right? That thing ain't going anywhere. And also, look at where my instrument is. Right? parallel to the ground. If I have my instrument dipped down like this, it's going to be very, I'm going to have to almost grip or to hold up straight up like this, right? And so having it, having it a little bit more parallel is going to help that, right? And so you're going to have to put your instrument probably more, you know, up on your shoulder instead of on your chest. You're going to be moving it up like this. The other thing that you're probably going to have to do is with this chin, this chin rest, I found that, notice when I'm playing, look at my chin. My chin is straight up on my chin rest right now. That's not actually what you want to do, is you want it to be more something like this. Look where my chin is now, right? Where my two fingers are, are, are where my actual chin is. But look at where that is in relation to the ch chin rest. Right? My chin is more like where these two fingers are here. It's not on the end. So this is more like a jaw rest, right? Think of it going around your jaw rather than your chin down here. It needs to be up and you have your, you have it around your jaw. And so when you move that up and you lift this chin off, my instrument ain't going anywhere. Right? And so what happens is once you start doing this, one, one little trick that you can start doing, especially when you're on something like, let's say you're in an orchestra and you're playing a part that's just repeated over and over, that's pretty easy, though, try to literally like, you're not gonna play like this, right, with your chin off of here, but lift your chin off of there every once in a while, every line or every little bit, and all that's doing is reminding yourself, oh yeah, stop gripping, oh, stop gripping, stop grip, right? every once in a while you play and just remind yourself to stop gripping with your shoulders and your chin, right? So that's a little exercise that you can do. I would seriously, you know, try to, to lift up just a hair more with here and relax your chin and shoulders, right? Last thing I'll tell you with, with tension, with here and with here is that when you're doing tension, especially with things like carpal tunnel or tendonitis, it's going to be very difficult to do tendonitis if I'm not engaging my thumb, right? When I'm just squeezing with my hands, I'm not very tense. But as soon as I engage my thumb, all of a sudden you can feel all these tendons here. You can try that at home. Is Grip with your thumb like this. It's way stronger than this when you add your thumb into there, but that's where all the tension comes from is when you're engaging with your thumb on either hand, right? And so, especially with the bow, one thing that you can try is instead of gripping the crap out of it is like relax that thumb a little bit, right? Especially on your, on your bow hand, right? Think about it with an egg. You can go grab an egg and like you're holding an egg, you can't squeeze that thumb too bad, it'll, you know, break. So relaxing with your thumb a hair and relaxing with the thumb a hair even though my chin is off of here i'm not sque like that i'm squeezing really bad there i relaxed it and i can still take my chin off of there and have this thumb relatively relaxed so this is what i think is what happens with the carpal tunnel is you engage with that thumb hard and start gripping and all of a sudden that's sending you know 
tension out through all of your tendons here. So relaxing those two thumbs can really, really help. Right? And last thing I'll say is, like, let's say I'm playing piano and or typing, right? When you're typing on your keyboard and they never, you know, they never tell you to drop those wrists right on your desk, right, or whatever, and then try to go. Well, part of what's happening is your wrist is on there, but the other part is you're tensing up these shoulders again. It's the same deal with piano. That's why they all tell you raise those wrists a little bit or at least at minimum keep it flat. Instead of, you know, maybe not that, but, you know, keep those wrists off of the bottom of your keyboard or on your desk. And again, it's still the problem of the shoulders. If you kind of relax typing, it's going to be hard to get tendonitis on your hands, right? So again, I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but I can't stress this enough of relax those shoulders, right? Try to, try to keep your body nice and straight. Right? Be able to lift that chin off of there a little bit and it'll help you kind of stop. I was at a point, and I remember this in college too, I was so tight and she came over and tried to take this out of my hand and I almost couldn't let her. I was so tight, like I did that with my bow, I think. She tried to go, here, let me take that out of your hand. And I was like, mm -mm. and I couldn't even hardly relax to let her just take that out of my hand. See, now that's relaxed and I can just pull it out there. But when I'm gripping with that thumb, she couldn't even like, you know, she couldn't take that out of there. So relax those shoulders is the bottom line. And, and you'll, you'll be able to avoid, I think, a lot of, a lot of tension and, um, and trips to the chiropractor or any, any of those kinds of doctors, you know. Um, so there you go. I hope that was helpful. Relax those shoulders and I think you guys should be good. Um, you can do it, you know. So, uh, anyway, that's, that's the video. Uh, keep, keep liking and subscribing the videos. Um, I'll be coming out with more of these tutorial ones. I also have this interview show called Casey Music Talk. I've interviewed 90 some musicians at this point around, the, around town. We talk about all sorts of music subjects and, um, I also have some clips of me playing on the channel. So, uh, sub to that and check, check out what I've got going on. I much appreciate it. You guys have a good week. All right, see ya.